No steering wheel, no pedals, no driver for that matter. No problem. Amazon owned Zooks says it's the first ever purpose built robo taxi with no manual controls to operate on public roads. Zook CEO Aisha Evans joins us now to tell us more about this incredible vehicle. Nice to see you in as close as you can get to layman's terms. How does this thing work? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Much appreciated. Uh, we use uh, technology around uh, AI, uh, industrial design, and also sensors and uh, and computes to basically have a, a robot taxi that uh, takes you from point A to point B the same way today uh, when uh, you use um, your app uh, to order somebody to come take you. Well, this time uh, with Zooks, the robot or the robot taxi will come pick you up and uh, get you where to where you need to and drop you off. So Aisha, it's very, very cool. I think there's a lot of hype surrounding this. What are the limitations though of this and how are you working to address that so you would be able to use this vehicle more often? Uh, safety is absolutely critical. Uh, you need to be uh, safe in all situations. Second, it's, it's sort of a, a little bit of a, uh, a two-headed situation. On the one hand, humans make a lot of mistakes uh, driving uh, as uh, measured by uh, fatalities uh, from crashes. But on the other hand, um, you know, 40,000 fatalities is not acceptable, but we also drive collectively uh, almost 100 million miles for by uh, for each fatality. And so basically we're also very good at driving and that's because we're very good humans at handling unforeseen, unpredictable scenarios. And so a lot of testing, uh, a lot of uh, quantifiable uh, data and metrics to make sure we're safe and deploying a little at a time, uh, not at scale every day uh, from the from the get go. So Aisha, the limitations were just there on the screen, including top sound at 40 miles an hour can only right now be used Saturdays and Sundays during daylight hours and not during inclement or bad weather? How close are you to overcoming any or all of these limitations? Uh, very close. Uh, Zooks, we've been extremely consistent since uh, inception in 2014. Uh, there are the vehicle capabilities. So for example, on speed, we've demonstrated that we can go up to 75 miles an hour. However, from a deployment standpoint, what we're clearing ourselves from a safety standpoint is up to 40 miles an hour. So you can expect a steady drumbeat uh, of uh, extensions of our permit uh, that uh, commiserate with uh, uh, what we're able to do on public road and we call that the operational design domain. And you can um, you know, as, um, expect several upgrades yearly all the way to our first paying customer and then uh, going uh, after several cities. Well, Asha, let's talk a little bit more about the use case for this because I think a lot of us, when we were talking about it, at least in our morning meeting, we were saying whether or not this would be used more as a corporate shuttle, shuttling employees from one place to the next, which I know is very popular out in California, if it could be used for deliveries. What do you see as the use case for this in, say, five years from now? So first step is uh, humans uh, and, uh, you know, in, in let's take the United States. We've already proven uh, there are companies that exist today. We've already proven that we like mobility on demand. Uh, for example, I live south of uh, San Francisco, but every time I'm headed to San Francisco and especially uh, on, a, on an evening for a date with high heels on, uh, I order a mobility on demand uh, service. And so the demand is there. Um, so that's the first step. It's basically instead of a human driven passenger car, the robot taxi will take you and then take on the next customer. And then eventually we'd like to make a dent on uh, personal uh, car ownership. I mean, transportation is really a service at the end of the day. Uh, we'd like to get to the point where uh, we start uh, having less cars on the road and uh, have higher utilization. That doesn't mean all passenger cars will go away, but uh, making a dent in that would be good for all of us, society, the environment, and so on. You're Amazon owned. So the obvious question is, do you foresee a time when these are making Amazon deliveries? And if I could just tag one on to that, in terms of fully autonomous vehicles, we all think of Elon Musk, just had 360,000 vehicles recalled. How different is your technology than the one employed at Tesla? 
That was three questions in one. All right. Just two. <laughs> Just two. Just two. All right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's start with uh, the uh, the the uh, the end. The second one. Look, we built something very different uh, than uh, what uh, Tesla does. Uh, I can't really comment on what's going on with them, not because I'm evading it, but because I don't actually know. Uh, what I do know is that we are not building something that is occasionally driverless, meaning that requires somebody behind the wheels with human controls and ready to take over. We're building something that's fully autonomous, fully driverless, and that goes from point A to point B and then uh, forward. As far as uh, Amazon, it's been a fantastic partnership. Uh, yeah, I mean, what one could imagine at some point working on uh, maybe some aspects of packages, but right now we're very grateful. We've been extremely focused. This is a great opportunity. I think uh, uh, Amazon has said that uh, it's one of the growth initiatives that they are investing in. It's a big market. We already know it. It's just the, the structure of that market is not very good right now and that gets solved with autonomy so focus 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 execute and then we'll figure out uh, adjacencies we are excited to see where this all leads aisha evans excuse me ceo of zooks thanks so much for joining us thank you for having me